are here now at the grave site of one of the most dramatic characters in Kentucky history and in Civil War history, General John Hunt Morgan. Morgan was the great cavalier of the Civil War. He was called the Thunderbolt of the Confederacy. And of course, there are so many stories about this man, and some of them are actually true. But what I want you to know about him is that he was one of the best of all the Confederate officers and probably one of the most dashing. If you've ever seen a photograph of him, he had that hat on with the side to it and the big plume to him. He had a, a mustache beard. He had everything you would want in a great Southern gentleman. And he, he knew that and he enjoyed that image too. So John Hunt Morgan, let's just say he really, really aggravated the Union a great deal during his career. John Hunt Morgan would raid several times into his uh, state of Kentucky. He would go through one section or the other. The Federals would try to catch him. He was always three steps ahead of them. He was just one of those will-o'-the-wisps, you might say. He even brought the war into Ohio at one point in time. He, he threatened every place there was, and the Federals could do nothing with him. And finally, finally, of course, all good stories have to come to an end, but John Hunt Morgan was in Tennessee in 18, as you see, in 1864. And he was surrounded by Union soldiers. And before he could do anything or could get away, he was shot and killed. And of course, his remains were brought back here to Lexington, where he is buried amongst his family, including his brother, who had died the year before, in the, in the war as well. John Hunt Morgan has been one of those figures that has become more legend than the reality, to be quite honest with you. But his home, of course, here is, is in Lexington, off of uh, Gratz Park there, and it tells something about the type of persons that Lexington and Kentucky produced in many ways. Although he was born in Alabama, he lived in Kentucky most of his life. But John Hunt Morgan even was captured at one point put in prison and actually escaped and got back to start all over his career again. But the Confederate high command didn't know quite what to do with him because he was just a little bit too radical at times. But his, his swift moves were something that made the Confederacy greatly feared. And uh, John Hunt Morgan was called a uh, brigand by the Union government. He was called a thief because sometimes uh, Morgan's men did borrow a few horses from time to time. They always, they always would leave, leave their old horses and sometimes they'd leave some money, Confederate money of course, and uh, that, that gave him a reputation as being a horse thief. But on the Confederate side, the Southern side, he was praised very, very much. And as you can imagine that, and when he died, many, many Southerners felt that part of the Confederacy was gone that could never be replaced, and this was true, because unfortunately, when he died in September of 1864, the end was already beginning for the Confederacy, and it would be just shortly before General Sherman would march through Atlanta and on to the sea, and of course lay waste to the south. And of course, in Lexington, I should point out something to you folks. Back in the old days, and when I'm saying old days, I'm saying anywhere from uh, the end of the war up and through the 1930s and 40s, John Hunt Morgan was the great hero of Lexington. And strangely enough, he was praised more than even Abraham Lincoln was. And that is just the way people looked at it in those days. But he is a great, great figure in Southern history and his exploits will always go down in history as being some of the most dramatic there is. And this gentleman who is buried right here, if you can see his name, some of you can't. One of you that's standing on that side, would you re please read his name? Basil Duke. Basil Duke was John Hunt Morgan's brother-in-law and second in command of Morgan's Raiders. And Basil Duke was a very brilliant man in his own right. So it is very appropriate that we have the Morgans and the Dukes here. And by the way, we were speaking about duels down there at the Henry Clay's Monument. Basil Duke's farm, which is in Scott County, 
was actually the dueling grounds of choice for people here in Lexington. They would go and they would fight. Yes, you did have to have a, a dueling grounds of choice in those days. Uh, you just didn't duel anywhere. Uh, but, but, but all of this is part of that romantic past of Lexington. And as you walk through this cemetery, one thing after the other that you'll see will be some of the great heroes and heroines of Kentucky history. And I think that that is something that you can tell your children about, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and I don't want to go any farther than that because you're getting very old. But, uh, but anyway, come and see this when you can, and always note, if you ever get turned around in the cemetery, there's a good way to, to find things. That monument right there is one of the best points to get to the Morgan site here, so always use that as a reference point. But do any of you have any questions about John Hunt Morgan? Confederate States of America, Confederate States of America, yes. Sometimes uh, you can see all of these were, were listed as such. And, uh, and you might want to know that for many years after the war was over, the United States government, of course, and you can understand, did not give pensions to Confederate soldiers. But after the turn of the 20th century into the 20th century, they actually began giving those, those soldiers pension, and they started putting up tombstones to them. But this, of course, was family tombstones. Are there a lot of CSA graves? In oh, yes, there's an entire section that we'll see <coughs> that, that is dedicated to the Confederacy. And you will see the National Cemetery where many Union soldiers are buried as well. And so we'll, we'll, we'll look at that in just a moment. Uh, any other questions that you might have? And yes, sir. I was waiting for that story to be asked about. <laughs> That is one of the great legends of John Hunt Morgan that he dashed through uh, his house uh, on Gratz Park and actually went from one end to the other on his horse. Oh, I hate to do this worse than anything, <laughs> but probably that never happened. It was one of those nice stories that was always told. Remember, in history, folks, sometimes the truth gets a little dull and people have to embroider things and sometimes it is better to say you know it should have been true if it's not so <laughs> but no we really don't think he did do that anything else if not we will uh, begin to turn if I can remember which way we are now to uh, the Todd section <laughs>